IHTN Studios. It's Braves Beat. Hello, Braves, and welcome to this week's episode of Braves Beat. I'm Gino Cardosi. And I'm George Zaring. Hold on. I thought we said it was my turn this week. No, we said it was my turn this week. No, we specifically said it was my turn. Dude, Dude just leave. We have an episode to film. Look, I'll go to premieres for you. All right, fine. But next week, it's me. Yep, next week. Love you. Bye. God, I hate that guy. Well, we got a lot of news to cover, so let's get started. November 11th marks Veterans Day, originally taking place in 1919. It started out as Armistice Day, which commemorated the end of World War I. It later evolved into Veterans Day, where we celebrate the men and women who served in our armed forces. On this day and every day, we thank all veterans for your service. Attention seniors, senior trip is approaching fast. We leave on Thursday of next week, November 16th, for Chicago at 8 a.m., so be sure to be on time and ready to go. We looked at the weather for the trip. Let's take a look at the forecast. Hello Braves, I have your Chicago senior trip weather report. Let's head to some baseline statistics to start this thing off. Starting off on Thursday the 16th, we'll see the high is 57 with a low of 51. Winds will be blowing southwest at 12 miles per hour as the Windy City does live up to its name. Humidity will be 64%. Little sticky but not too bad. Sunrise will be at 641, nice and early for all of my fellow early risers. Sunset at 428. Moving on now to Friday, the high is a balmy 62, almost unheard of for this time of year in Chicago. The low also 52, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Winds will stay at 12 miles per hour, but have shifted now to the south-southwest, so think about packing that jacket you threw in your suitcase at the last minute. Humidity is 73%, very sticky, not too comfortable. We might see some rain later on with that. Sunrise is a full minute later, so you get 60 seconds more glorious sleep and darkness. Sunset is 428. Saturday now, the high is 61 with a low of 53, so a little bit cooler in the high, but a little warmer in the low. Winds are west-southwest and have increased to 15 miles per hour. Definitely want to bring that jacket. Humidity, though, is lowered to 65%, a little less sticky than the other day. Sunrise will be at 643, and the sunset will be at 427. Let's move on out to our three-day forecast. Thursday will be 57 and partly cloudy, with Friday being significantly warmer at 62. Saturday, though, it seems that that humidity on Friday is going to come back to bite us with a little bit of rain on Saturday. But what do we care? We'll be in a bus heading home. All right, this has been your weather report. I'm Gino Cardozzi. I'm going to send it back to the desk. Thanks, past me. Looks like that's a problem for future me. You know, I think I like him better. What? Yeah, he's more charismatic. Well, no matter who you think is the better me, if you're looking for something to do tonight with your family, Indian Hill High School is hosting a global potluck dinner. The event will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. in the cafeteria, and all families in the IH School District are invited to attend. It will be a fun evening for the whole family with food, music, games, and activities. The cost is just $10 for the whole family. Our Braves marching band season ended with a trip to the finals at the MSBA Class A Championships. An incredible effort by our students led to one of the highest scores in years. Congratulations, marching band, and shout out to the amazing seniors, Miranda, Nathan, Audrey, Remy, and Sharon. Way to go, Braves. We have some exciting news in athletics this week. Let's send it over to Brooke and John with a special report. Hello, Braves. I'm John Anning. And I'm Brooke Arrington. With fall sports coming to an end, we don't have that much sports to cover this week. But we do have some important news to go over, so let's get started. Let's do a quick recap of some of our fall sports highlights this past season. First up, our boys football team, boys soccer team, girls tennis team, and cheerleading team all finished as CHL champs. Way to go, Braves. Not only was our boys soccer team the CHL champs, but they were also district champions and lost in a neck and neck game against Summit in the regional finals. Great run, boys. Lastly, our girls' tennis team finished the season undefeated and as state champions. Woo! Go girls' tennis. What an awesome fall season of sports. Amazing job, Braves, and keep up the good work. This past Wednesday was the National Signing Day for our committed athletes here at Indian Hill High School. Congratulations to Dakota Spurrier, Weston Jonke, Alex Hosoffel, Charlie Isferding, Ben Liebel, Alex Castellini, Lexi Larson, Madden Phelps, and Gavin Johnson. Whoa. Brooke, aren't you forgetting someone? Mm, who? It's yourself. <laughs> oh, right. Go dogs. Go dogs. All right, <laughs> Braves. I think that just about wraps up our fall sports recap.
back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Broken John, and congratulations to all of our Braves who signed today. If you're like us, you've probably been wondering, what happened to the Bells? Or maybe you didn't, but I did, so I went and talked to Mr. Damadeo to figure out what caused the change. Hey, Braves. So I'm here today to ask the question that we've all been wondering, what happened to the Bells? So I have our one and only principal, Mr. Jeff Damadeo, here to answer that question. So the Bells one day just kind of suddenly disappeared, and we sort of kind of got like an email that we were going to not have them anymore. What, uh, what happened with that? What prompted that decision? So one of our roles as educators, and we often talk about this with our students, is to help cultivate skills within all of you beyond just content expertise. And part of that is life skills. And time management, collaboration, creativity, the ability to communicate, all of those are life skills. And those are skills that transcend the classroom. And you know what you're not going to experience when you leave high school? What, the bells? Bells. There's no bell in a career. There's no bell in college. And so one of the things, if we hear that time management is a skill that we lack, how do we create an environment that is going to kind of force us, maybe a little uncomfortable in the beginning, to think about managing my time better? both from a classroom perspective, how do I manage my lesson design, how do I manage my attention as a student, similarly to how do you design or how do you monitor when you get here in the morning to get here on time. You probably set a bell or an alarm at, at your house, right? Okay. And yet, some days we still know we're late. But you set the bell. You arrange the time. You create that schedule for yourself, and you're learning the skill of how to manage my time. This is part of that. And so when we think about preparing our students for beyond these walls, um, there are no bells to tell you when to move, when to get up, when to come to school, when not to be late, when to go to lunch, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we learn to manage our time? And like any change, it's uncomfortable. And like any growth, to grow and succeed, you have to lead in, lean into that discomfort and see how it goes. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to see how it goes, and we're going to cultivate some skills. There's also a lot of research behind mental health and school bells, believe it or not, that simply the ringing of a school bell, sometimes particularly for students who may not love a school, believe it or not, that actually is a stimuli that actually creates greater anxiety in the student. So there's a lot of research behind success of students beyond school when you remove the school bell. And I'll give one last, and I'll let you splice it all together. Since COVID, when you were all home, and we were on a variety of different schedules. You had to manage your time. We had a schedule, it was a hybrid schedule. You had to show up online. There were no bells to tell you to do that. And yet, you were all extremely successful of managing that at your house. And so, a lot of schools, when we came back from COVID and we were able to kind of deploy school, said, you know what, let's keep, let's keep going. Let's put that responsibility back into our students to teach them time management skills. And so, an abrupt change, yes. Uh, a positive change, who are meant to be seen. But I believe the research shows us that once we're able to embrace this and get through this change and through this discomfort, there will be some really great things we learn about each other and some skills that we're going to acquire that help us be better um, individuals once we leave these walls. All right, well, thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you about this. We'll send it back to the desk now. Well, it'll be interesting to see this, if this change will last. One of our staff members, Mrs. Thomas, welcomed a new member into her family. John Lincoln Thomas was born on November 7th at 7.20 a.m., weighing in at 8 pounds and 1 ounce. Congratulations, Mrs. Thomas. The FCA is sponsoring a winter gear drive. If you have any unused coats, gloves, socks, hats, or other cold weather items, put them in the bins located in the front lobby. The drive will run through December 6th. Congratulations to our Braves Model UN team. They competed at Wyoming High School in a competition on October 28th. Samantha Kane walked away with the Outstanding Delicate Award for her work for the Democratic Republic of the Congo in the UNICEF Committee. Congratulations to the whole team. All right, Braves, that's all the news we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on X, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember... Stay, Stay classy, classy Indian Hill. Hill. Guys, as you all know, the OG Fortnite season came back into town, and I'm um, here with Danny today, and he's going to show us his favorite Fortnite emote. What, what's that emote called? It's a T-Post. I'm here with... Jenna Arnold. Alex Stein. Paige Rabinold. Guys have a favorite Fortnite dance? Yeah.
Then do it right now. Here with Jack. Jack, what's your favorite Fortnite emote and can you perform it? Uh, it's the Orange Justice. <laughs> perfect, oh, perfect. What's up, Braves? I'm here with Noah Frazier. Noah, do you like Fortnite? I love Fortnite. Can you do your favorite emote? Yeah, I'm gonna do the best mates. I'm here with Brooke Arrington, so what's your favorite Fortnite dance? Oh. <laughs> what's your favorite Fortnite dance? That game's for nerds, I don't play. You are a nerd, and don't lie, you do play. I know it. I like the hype. Okay, do it. Okay. <laughs>